It's good. Back to football. I mean, uh, working out and all that's cool, but uh, it was nice to get the time off that we did. But, you know, after a couple weeks, we're all itching to get back out here, and it's good to get things rolling. You talked a lot about working on your mechanics, tweaking things, the throw, the time and throw with the soft touch to NWI over there on the sideline during the 11 on 11. Is that kind of an example of one of the, the ways you kind of improved with the, via your mechanics? For sure. I mean, those that route and that throws specifically is going to have to be a big one in our offense, and there are different ways to throw it. But I feel like how we connected on that one is the easiest on both ends, at least for him to, to catch secure and um, and for me to just repetitively get that down and do it in the same timing and sequence. Uh, and I feel like that was a lot of the work that I'd put in the last few weeks paying off. And just one of those ones where as soon as you lose your hand, you just, you know, it's going to be good. Is that a throw that would have been more challenging for you last year? Uh, yeah, especially in the spring, like um, working through those. It, it's, it's a route that I've thrown, you know, my entire life, but I've grown and thrown differently as, as I've progressed in my career. And so every, every time you try to make those little tweaks, uh, um, you might feel like you're setting yourself back a little bit and you have to work to kind of get to the consistency that you had with uh, whatever stroke you had before. So um, it was a, it was good to get that one down and uh, just got to keep working on it. Which of those tweaks will, did you kind of stick with that you were experimenting with during the offseason in terms of, I guess, base and then your own value? Yeah, I think um, being a little calmer, not as dramatic with some of the things I'm doing with my footwork, especially on the plant foot and then once I get to the top of my drop, my base. I know I've talked about that a lot, but I feel really good where I'm at with that. Um, I feel like at the top of my drops and, and through my hitches, I'm able to keep myself in a more consistent uh, position to deliver the ball. And um, just got to keep working on making it more consistent. As an opinion of an offense, what do you guys need to accomplish to feel good about yourself? I think develop uh, consistency and being able to go out there and not just put one good period together, but uh, we know that it's going to be competitive and that the defense will have their periods, but in terms of just operation and procedure, um, getting in and out of the huddle and getting people lined up correctly and uh, just the different mechanisms of, of the plays running in a, on a consistent basis is going to be the biggest thing for us. Uh, we had our spurts of that throughout the spring, and it was our first time, obviously, going through the offense. So uh, Callie made a point yesterday just with how fast you rip through all the – installs it's it's expected that we know this stuff so we, we can kind of breeze through it faster and putting a lot more stuff on a daily basis and guys are expected to go out there on their stuff and uh and know this so uh it was good to see today that i felt really good about you know how we operated obviously it's the base stuff it's only going to get more complicated from here so uh we just look forward to continuing to improve there yeah, Brian, stuff, about like how much progress do you feel you've made as far as getting that grasp from mastering the offense you said you wanted to yeah, I feel great. I mean, I feel like I definitely have a really good handle on it, and I'm able to help guys uh, in and outside of the building with questions that they have. It's 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 always a, a process. There's never going to be a you know mastery, and every single time you go through this, it's like our fourth or fifth time going through this. It's it's having the diligence to take down the same notes for the fourth or fifth time, but then try to find those few things that you might not have caught on that first time around that you can add to the arsenal and. Maybe you might have had one or two thoughts on a certain play, and maybe those thoughts you don't even have to think about now. So now it's a couple more thoughts that you can kind of add into that um, to make you make those more intricate and uh, important decisions in those certain situations. We asked Ryan about extra workouts, and for instance, the trip to Cabo helped you build chemistry with some of those guys around you. Yeah, I always stress that it, with the new offense and with the new players, it's, it, the reps that we get with each other is, is more important than anything. So uh, it was important for that little trip that we did and then the last couple of weeks getting with guys uh, around here and, and throwing before we, we got out to camp. Um, I think that helped a lot with uh, my feel with them. We asked Brian about the, the, the trip to Cabo and, and the gatherings at Vanderbilt. He obviously liked it, but he also said, like, quarterback leader is expected to bring people along, but wasn't talking literally or geographically, but leaders, leadership wise. But how do you feel about having, how easily did that come to you and, and kind of what you feel about? how all of that went and how willing guys were to follow. Uh, yeah, I was pumped about it. I just kind of wanted to wait till I was in a position to do stuff like that. And obviously, be, it being my first off season, being the starting quarterback and having that job, I, I had seen guys in the league do that with, with their guys in the past. And I was really looking forward to having that opportunity to go and do some team bonding in a, in a cool spot and get some working at the same time. But yeah, that was a cool trip. And then it's it's not just fun stuff like that. It's It's throughout camp, how can I help guys and reach out in any way possible 
and just be available to, to help them and uh, help them improve and help some guys, you know, make the team. So I'm, I'm here as a resource and uh, they know that and I'm going to continue to do my best to, to show them that I can uh, be that for them. Well, to that end, how much more comfortable and confident do you feel now than you did last year when you were first thrust into this role? In the uh, yeah, very. Um, you know, a year ago now, definitely very uncomfortable with uh, it being my first NFL training camp and uh, kind of just trying to find my way and knowing that obviously I wasn't the starter and not knowing when my opportunity would come. And then it's difficult being kind of thrusted in in the, in the middle of the season uh, without having all those precious reps throughout the spring and throughout the first uh, certain amount of weeks with, with the starters. So um, all of the, the work throughout the spring, um, throughout the, the last summer that we've had and, and throughout camp, I, I know how valuable it is and I know how much better it's going to make me come game one. What has the conversation been like with you and Brian Callahan in terms of maybe taking some risks during training camp, learning from that? So maybe you know during the game you say, okay, we can do that. Yeah, that's something we need to shy away from. Yeah, we talked a couple times, um, you know, throughout our time off about mentality of training camp, and uh, you know, first couple of days we're gonna, you know, take the easy ones and, and not try to push the ball downfield too too much, just with the acclimation period and all that. But uh, I'm really looking forward to taking those shots and. Um, finding that line between um, pushing it and uh, testing it, I guess. So you don't want to be reckless with the ball. But now is the time to, to test my arm and to test the ability of, of, of these guys and the skill sets that they have. And um, we know that you know, the special plays are made by are in those certain situ situations. And we need to work on those if we expect them to show up on Sundays or Mondays. Life is kind of a whirlwind last, last offseason, getting ready for the draft and settling in. How much were you able to focus on yourself this offseason? And do you feel the difference here starting camp much different than last year? For sure. I think just stress levels are way down. I think also just having the, the games and reps that I did last year throughout the season, I was able to kind of just settle me into this job and, and understanding kind of what it takes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm harder on myself than. Um, I'd like to say a lot of people are. So uh, I understand that about myself. And uh, that can be positive and it can be negative. And I think there was times last year where that was a little negative for me, just with all the pressure and stress that I kind of put on myself in certain situations. But I'm able to kind of use it in a more positive way this time around because of the confidence that I built and just the comfortability I have now with my position with this team. Talk about being a starting quarterback. And that in this league can be fickle at times as to being a starter one year and not a starter the next year. When you see the kind of contracts that people are signing, the $55 million, the $54 million, and then see other guys that were drafted high that end up not making it to the second contract as a starter, does that make you think about how important this opportunity this season with this group is? For sure. I mean, I try to just take it one day at a time. And, and I know uh, how quickly this blessing can be taken away from you. And I, I definitely remind myself every so often just to keep myself in check and to make sure that my work ethic's on point. Um, it's, uh, it's a cutthroat league. It's a business. And I know that if I don't show up on Sundays, uh, I won't have my job, and rightfully so. So I just want to make sure that when I get out there uh, for game day that I can do my best and I can uh, prove the people right in this building that they were uh, correct in, in picking me to come here. Well, Brian has talked about kind of helping your completion percentage maybe a little bit this year. I'm wondering, as, as part of this offense, um, will you potentially be more selective maybe about some of the deep shots? Um, than maybe a year ago, or, and you know, maybe some of them were taking more of the check downs. Is that a possibility at all? Is possibility, I'd say. I think that it's also just like having the, the core plays that we know are just our completion plays and um, being comfortable and okay with taking them over and over and over again. And then also, like, uh, we'd love to push the ball down the field um, when, it's, when it's appropriate. And we need to make sure that those are also high percentage plays. But, you know, you're not expected to complete. 70, 80 percent of balls downfield. If if you live in that, you know, 50 percent deep range, like that's that's great, um, and we understand that. But uh, you know, that's not going to be most majority of our plays. But uh, there's been conversations about, obviously, like taking risks throughout training camp, but also like having reps where maybe you don't have to prog or you can't progress because the the pocket or whatever doesn't allow it, and just getting right to your check down and um, seeing a lot of clips throughout the cutups of even though it might say one, two, three, just really moving on and feeling when it's uh, appropriate to uh, get the ball to the back. And with the backs we have, that's al always going to be a great opportunity uh, for us if they can get the ball in space. So we understand that, and we're going to make sure we work through it. 
Knowing how excited you are about this opportunity, like what are the, some of the things you go to, like maybe like the night last night to keep yourself from getting too high, or even when you're on the field, just trying to balance that so you're not too jacked up. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've always been an emotional player, I feel like, and I think last year I did a great job of keeping that more neutral, uh, even keelness about uh, how I handle myself on the field. Um, I think uh, emotion is good as long as you're able to bring yourself back to base. Um, and it's understanding that it's not the end of the world and this is the time period to learn and grow. Um, so like today, a couple of plays, obviously I'd like to, like to get back, but moving on from them and coming back and finishing strong, uh, putting an emphasis on that and making sure everyone else understands that as well. Uh, and then just having things outside of ball to, to turn to, like the circle that I keep around me uh, with my family and friends um, and other things that I do with the hour and a half I have free time after, after camp practices. So that's important to just come in every day on a clean slate and um, not burn yourself out and, and make one day roll into the other, good or bad. That's what I wanted to ask off the field. Like, is there music? Is there a movie? Like, some guys like they'll watch Gladiator or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have like a specific uh, movie. I definitely like TV shows. We were talking, uh, we were installing a play, and it reminded us of uh, House of the Dragon. I'm a Game of Thrones guy, so I, I, I got like four episodes to catch up on that. So that'll be nice. Maybe uh, every night or so for the next week, get one in. Um, started journaling recently. I didn't, never really done that. Um, I've, I've had it recommended to me for from friends uh, for a while, and. Um, about a weekend, actually, just figured it'd be a good time to get started with camp and everything and keeping track of what's going on in here and what's going on outside. And I think it'll be cool to look back and, and track all that one day. So it's been good. Uh, introspection, I'd say, just being able to understand and, and acknowledge what really is going on inside my brain. Like, I think a lot of the times, um, unless I have someone to talk to about it and I truly like feel comfortable like spilling it all out. Um, I might not even recognize what's on my brain and then I feel like writing it down and, and spilling out those thoughts gives me more of a perspective on what could be affecting me um, when I get in here. So um, it's been good so far. Obviously, like I'm not an expert on it with how early I am into it, but um, it's been healthy for me and I look forward to continuing it. Some yeah, some players were saying that the defense was already talking trash day one. Did you hear any of that? And is that something you kind of just expect early on in camp? Is that fun? Yeah, I know. We, we, got, we embrace it. And uh, it's, it's the type of player you are. And I feel like defensive players always just tend to be the more the, the talkers. And, uh, and that's their, their identity. And it's going to be great. We got to find ways to uh, combat them, whether it's us coming back to them in certain ways or, or just showing it with, with how we play. Um, and, you know, we're not going to play. We're not going to not play teams that uh, talk trash. So it's good for us. It's good to make sure that we stay level-headed and maintain our focus on the task ahead, um, and also help us work on our trash talking a little what bit. Do you, so. What do you do for your uh, relaxation time during the time of golf? I know you, uh, other than Cabo working with us, what did you kind of do to get away and relax? Yeah, I think the one thing I did was I was in Italy with my family for about a week, um, and. It was a trip that we had had our eyes on for a really, really long time. So me, all my sisters, mom, dad, grandma, cousins, uncle, um, got out there in Tuscany and really just chilled. Um, and was able to work out and stuff while I was out there and not to the level that I was able to here. So I was kind of freaking out a little bit, but got in what I could, um, experienced some, some really cool culture and got to a spot of the world that not a lot of people get to see, which is pretty cool. Schools of thought when it comes to starters playing in the preseason. One is get your guys to week one healthy. The other is get them experience and get the offense together. Brian said you guys are going to play in all three preseason games. Is the plan. So how much are you embracing that opportunity and your thoughts on, on that coming up? Uh, I've never turned down an opportunity to play football. So I'm just I'm trying to go out there and do my best, uh, whatever's asked of me. Um, whether it's a series or a whole game, I'm going I'm to I'm do it. And... I know everyone else in the building is excited too, and I think that it's valuable for us to get those reps because is, even though these are definitely important, um, getting true game-like live reps against uh, another team is going to be important for our growth. What's your relationship, like, what's your like relationship with a stronger offensive line this season in terms of pass protection? Wondering, in your mind, what, what does just like a fraction of a second extra pass protection mean for, for a quarterback? I mean, it could be the difference between being able to get to that next read and not. Uh, it's a lot. It gives you confidence, too. 
Um, and uh, just the, it's more of a feel thing, I think, in being able to work through camp and uh, preseason and see how we're able to hold up uh, when we get to the season. It's, it might affect even uh, maybe our game plan, like uh, we're, how we're able to truly get through plays and uh, as an offensive coordinator or play caller, uh, what they what goes through their mind when they're calling a play. Um, more shots down the field, more throwing, uh, if we have that confidence. So obviously, uh, very exciting. Thanks, Walt. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It went well, man. Uh, obviously, had a, you know a lot of mistakes. I, I kind of expected that, but you know, just to come out here and run around, with, you know, with my new teammates, it felt great. What does it mean for you to get the opportunity here with familiarity and specifically? It means everything, and you know, obviously, in my process, that was probably the main thing. Obviously, being around Denar, being around Jack and Frank Bush and those guys again, it's it's almost like home base. You know, those guys raised me, and you know, I'm just grateful to be back. How was your patience kind of waiting for the opportunity, and then what was the feeling like when the first going to be here? Uh, you know, obviously, I knew it was going to be a long process. Um, eventually, we would get it figured out. But, you know, obviously, you know, for me, it was just about being in shape and obviously getting back from my injury, um, going on two years uh, next month, uh, post-op. So, you know, just wanted to get back out here and, you know, run around again, and it feels good. With this game with Arthon yesterday, he called your, your deal. He's like, it's a prove-it prove it deal. For right. Same for him. Right. What do you feel like you need to prove it? I mean, obviously, I just want to get back out there and, you know, continue to be myself. Um, you know, obviously, I just want to continue uh, to – the main thing, obviously, is my teammates. You know what I mean? Just proving to them that I can, uh, you know, be on the field with them again and, uh, you know, go out there and just compete. That's what it's about. Coach Callahan said that he kind of envisions, for, for lack of a better term, a utility role for you, being in a lot of different sub packages and yes, things sir. like that. How much do you embrace that at this juncture of your career? Uh, I mean, I'm going to take it on. Obviously, you know, it, it's it's never easy to come in and, and learn a new system, but um, I'm willing to. Um, you know, every day is a grind. and. Um, you know, every day I'm in my playbook just learning. Obviously, I'm out there just flying around and, you know, just trying to, you know, keep up with the guys. And, um, you know, I'm going to have mistakes. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect, and um, I'm not trying to be. Uh, so, you know, when I'm out there and I have a mistake or two, obviously I just learn from it and I move on. So you said it feels like, you know, home base being here with familiar bases. Yes, sir. Um, what is it about Denard Wilson that you, you like or was always maybe attracted to him? Oh man, it's just so so many things. Uh, he's a, he's a very unique guy, one of one. Um, you know, obviously, just his accountability, uh, just staying on the players, making sure everybody's you know chasing greatness. Um, and you know, obviously, I feel like I got away from that a little bit. Um, you know, you you can't slack around him. You can't slack around any of these coaches out here um, because they're they're pushing you to be the best. How's your health now, Jamal? And and have you lost something, or do you have to make up for something based on on, on what you've suffered? No, I don't think I lost anything. Uh, I just think that, you know, it's, it was a process. Um, obviously, you know, uh, my, my track record, it speaks for itself. And, you know, obviously I'm just coming out here to, you know, get my feet back under me and, you know, compete. What has to happen for you to be the Jamal Adams of 2019-2020? The man above. That's all I can do is just put my faith in him, uh, continue to work hard, continue to uh, be a good teammate, come out here and, uh, you know, just bust my ass. That's what it's about. What can you bring in terms of uh, leadership? You know, we know you're a vocal guy. Yes, ma'am. When you hear it on the field, how can you kind of help in terms of that? Yeah, obviously just coming out and, you know, just having some knowledge of the game and, and, and understanding what um, is about to happen to us beforehand. And um, anything I can do to, you know, be a great teammate, that's what I'm going to do. Um, obviously, you know, being eight years into the game, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, that's, that's very rare. It doesn't happen often. Um, and to help guys underneath me, uh, that's what it's about. So, obviously, I get called like OG and old, old cat now. So it's kind of crazy. Um, I remember being, you know, 21 coming into the coming into the league, and um, time flies. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Being a tone setter, that's one of the reasons they wanted you here. For you, like when you play the game with the excitement, the emotion, like, where do you gather that from? What drives you? I mean, I just love the game. Um, you know, I've been I started playing football at age three. Um, obviously, my father, I don't, I don't know if you guys know, he played with the Giants. Um, his career was cut short due to injury. Um, so, you know, I started at, at age three, and I've always loved the game. You know what I mean? It's never been about money for me. Um, obviously, you know, that, that comes with it, with, with, with great play. But uh, for me, it's just the love of the game. What, what do you know about the supporting cast? I guess guys around you uh, in the secondary, maybe just across the defense. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many guys, man. Uh, you know, Hooker back there. and. Uh, you know, you got Arden Key. Uh, you know, we were teammates at LSU, uh, so I know all about him. 
uh, Big Simmons up front, uh, the best of the best. Uh, there's so many guys, you know, around. Uh, Snee just came in. Uh, Cheeto just came in. Um, so so much talent. Uh, but yet we got we got to continue to uh, work hard. We got to continue to put our head down and grind. Um, obviously, not too many people believe in us, but that's okay. Um, at the end of the day, we just got to go out and earn it. Oh man, he hasn't shut up since. And but that's okay. I haven't shut up either. So <laughs> it's all good. Uh, he's just he's full of energy, man. But uh, he's a phenomenal football player. Um, you know if. if, if if you want one thing from me, uh, that's probably one of my, you know, top three teammates I've ever played with. Um, I just love his energy. Um, he, he's the same every day. Uh, very positive guy. But when he gets on that field, he's a nasty dude. Have you stayed in touch with, with Quandre uh, Diggs much? He's yeah, I have. Still? Yeah, we talk every day, man. Every day. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I'm the type, and he, he knows me. We've known each other for so long. Uh, since we were kids, and um, I'm not gonna, you know, push him to come here. Obviously, I would love for him to be here, um, but you know, you know, he he has to figure out his process, you know, on his own, and he will eventually. Uh, I know there's so many teams looking at him, and hopefully, we get him. So much yeah, What's your early take for Jeff Simmons on his leadership style, and yeah. especially the complimentary nature you're telling us about that they're eating up front and helps you guys Absolutely. in secondary and vice versa. Absolutely. I mean, again, he's a special player. Um, it's a reason why he's play, paid that high. It's a reason why, you know, he, he makes pro bowls and all pros. Um, he, he's a one-of-one -one talent. Um, I'm excited to be with him. Who's talking more trash, Simmons or Arden Key today? <sighs> That's tough. That's tough. Honestly, I'm just glad I didn't have to. I don't say anything right now. I'm just trying to learn. So uh, I just let those two guys speak. Um, obviously, you know, everybody, you know, they, they're, they're rallying behind them. And those are two guys and, uh, that, are, that are really special players. And uh, they deserve all the credit in the world. Process on getting uh, 33. Say it again. What was the process like for you to get number 33 back? Oh uh, man, it was a, it was a uh, it was a I ain't gonna say a tough process, but it was it was a process. Uh, I'm just grateful that uh, he he allowed me to get the jersey uh, number back. Uh, obviously, it means so much to me. It's just not a number. Um, it's a family number for me. Uh, I've never been a different number um, since I started you know playing football at age three. I've always been 33. It's tatted on me. Um, so, you know, I'm just happy that my mom is happy, uh, my, my family's happy, and that's all that matters to me. Did the process involve cash? <laughs> it did, it did, it did, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> it was worth it. The question's about coverage and where you are in, in that point, from yeah. your perspective. Like, how do you respond to those questions about, you know, the lack of coverage? Right. That you I mean, it is what it is. I mean, everybody's going to have an opinion. Uh, you know, for me, I just keep my head down and grind. Um, you know, uh, again, I wasn't healthy the past two years. Uh, I'm getting back into my stride, and we'll see. How did that outro process work with, with Seattle? And was there a point that did they ask you to move to a different position? Yeah, they did. They definitely did. Uh, it, obviously, it wasn't, um, you know, what I wanted to do. And uh, I wish those guys nothing but the best. Um, I, I love all my teammates over there. I can't wait to see them here in a couple weeks. We talk every day. I still keep up with them. Um, anything they need, they know they can reach out to me uh, and, and chop it up, uh, coaches included. You know, I still have relationships. Um, man, that, that building, you know, it was a special building. You know what I mean? And um, I, I enjoyed my time. I did. It, it, it was cool. Is it safe to say there will be a little extra edge on the joint practice? Oh, it's going to be fun, man. Uh, but, you know, the, the ultimate goal is to compete. You know, whether who, who's out there, you know, my teammates, another team, high school team come up here and compete with us. It doesn't matter. You know, we're going to compete. It's been tough. Not to cut you off, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, been, it's been really tough. Um, you know, I've realized that you can love the game, but the game doesn't love you back. And I've realized that, you know, no matter what, um, you got to keep your head down and keep, keep a close circle uh, because, you know, everybody's going to change on you. Um, I, I was at the top of the chart, the highest of the highest, the best of the best, and I'm, I was at the bottom. And now I'm working myself right back to the top. That's what it's about for me. And um, obviously just being down for, you know, a year, not being able to walk. Um, I was in a straight brace for, man, 10, 10 to 15 weeks, you know, not being able to, you know, shower by myself, get out the bed by myself. I was in a wheelchair, um, humbling beginnings, you know what I mean? And uh, it wasn't even about football. You know, it was more so just about life. Um, you know, a lot of things kind of happened over time. Uh, I just, I just buried my grandmother. Uh, so, you know, I, I've just been focused on my family and what, what makes me happy. You know, outside noise is just outside noise. I, you know, everybody can have their opinion about me and that's fine. But at the end of the day, I'm just going to continue to be myself, be a great guy, which I am, and be a great teammate. What, you, what, did you about your, what have you learned about yourself having to go through all that in person? Man, just uh, perseverance, man, and just uh, pushing through 
hard times and adversity. Um, you know, everybody in life is going to go through adversity. It's just a matter of when. Um, and you're never prepared for it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you got to attack it. it. I always knew that I was going to make it out. I just didn't know when. You know, I didn't know how long the process was going to be. My surgeon was kind of telling me two years, and I was just, you know, as competitive as I am, I was just saying, like, you know, I'm going to get back in a year or so. And obviously I tried to get out there last year, and, you know, it was tough, man. I was having to be on tour at all 24-7 and, and just to play. Um, really couldn't, you know, be myself, couldn't cut and, you know, be explos explosive like I wanted to. Um, but, you know, you live and learn. Obviously, you know, I just wanted to be out there with my teammates and, and, and to fight. That's what it was about. Are you the same player now that you were before all that? I think so. Um, I think it's just a process of getting back. Um, it's a process of, of learning uh, myself, of, of, of knowing my body, uh, knowing my assignments, uh, coming out here and flying around the ball, um, you know, timing up different blitzes and things like that in that nature. Um, I'm, you know, I'm just excited for, you know, the opportunity to get back. You know, we'll see. You know what I mean? What did you my discover point. about yourself going through all that that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise known? Good question. Um, how positive I stayed, honestly. Uh, because it was, like you said, I, I just love the game so much. Uh, just to sit there and, you know, have to, you know, sit in the stands and support my teammates. That was a different, you know, viewpoint, should I say. Um, you know, I, I, I was so supportive of them, um, but it hurt me so much just to even be around it, be around it and, and be around the process, um, just to know that I couldn't go out there and compete with my guys. And I couldn't show rookies or younger guys uh, beneath me how to practice or how to go out there and, and make that play or how to blitz or how to time up things. I couldn't show them that. I think that was uh, – something that was really tough for me. But just, just being positive through the process, I think that was uh, something that, you know, I didn't expect myself to continue to do. Thanks, Jamal. Thanks, Jamal. Thanks, Jamal. Thanks, Jamal. Thanks, Jamal. Finally been able to get out on the field. I mean, how was that first day? And just the newness of everything, what were you taking from that? Um, today was great. Um, <clears throat> being able to get out there. I don't know if y'all saw, um, got this new thing with, today with Denard. Made her do up-downs. That was new to me. I haven't did up-downs since high school. Um, but I think that just the mindset that we're trying to attack, everything we do is going to be together, um, especially starting on defense. Um, you know, everything's flying around. You know, um, attention to details. Um, football, it's football. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it's too much new. Only thing new is a new playbook. We got, of course, we got new coaches. And, you know, we've been together since OTAs. And I think at the end of the day, we all got, have the same expectations once we hit the field. Um, it's, it's totally different. Um, you know, normally we'll come in and meet. But like this morning, we came in and you go straight to practice. So it's all about um, getting your body ready um, before. And also, I mean, we just got a playbook yesterday, the install for today practice. That mean, if you're not studying at nighttime, like tonight, we have a walkthrough for the tomorrow practice, putting the install in. And the first thing you got tomorrow is practice. So I think that's, that's um, new for us. But at the end of the day, this is a profession, um, I think, at the end of the day, we, we expect, especially as players, and I'm sure the coaches expect out of us to come in here ready for practice. So yeah, the focus has shifted like, on you. Like, it's not just a leader of the D-line. You're a leader on this team now. You're a face for franchise, so to speak. Like, how do you approach that? How much do you like that opportunity? Now, I, I want to say I go back a couple years ago. Like When I first got here, I had guys like Jarrell Casey, um, even Daquan, Wesley Woodyard, all them guys who I, I was – you know, they always, you know, when becoming a leader, you have to know when to follow. And I think as I was growing, um, especially through that, my first year as a um, rookie, I was learning a lot from them guys. And I want to say probably like going into my second year and then really my third year where I really felt like, you know, this was my team. I've, I've been feeling that way, you know, um, as y'all know, like on Sundays, I break the huddle down. Um, that's something I take pride in. But as, as when you grow and you're trying to grow as a leader, you want that responsibility. Because it's not, I, I guess what, what I'm say, when you're first looking at it, when you come into the building, it's about you, you know, how you are approaching the day. Um, you know, when you had a bad day of practice, you had a bad rep, you know, guys looking at your body language. And then one thing I talked to the defense about the practice is just body language, you know. And um, like I said, I take full responsibility of it. You know, I love it. I love challenges. But at the end of the day, I've been felt like this was my team. Um, you know, I don't try to do more um, or less of my job, but also been feeling like I was a leader. Um, I've been feeling that.
But like I said, I saw what Rand was said, you know, just the audit, I mean, the um, interview he had. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I take responsibility of the team and just, just like, you know, I'm going to stand up for my guys at, no matter what it is, um, holding them accountable, you know, having their back, whatever it may be. But like I said, we all trying to get to one goal. You know, we all have, it's a lot of leaders in this building. You know, I, I hope they're not putting it on me. <laughs> you know, I'm looking for my other teammates to step up even when I'm doing something wrong or my body language or anything that in that nature. So I'm excited um, just to take on a bigger role, if you want to call that. But at the end of the day, I've been feeling like I've been had that role on the team. So. This team feel compared to last year with all the, the new faces and since of really more veterans on the squad. I mean, it's kind of just you know, when my job is it been in the trenches, everything kind of feel the same because at the end of the day, we expect whoever on the field, all eleven, even guys on the sideline. Like yesterday, when we were talking um, the first day we got here. It was like you never know when your name is gonna be called, so we expect everyone to be ready, no matter if you're a young guy. You know, you're here just for a workout, warm, I mean, um, practice squad guy, you think you're just on the practice squad, you know, you all got to be ready at any time. So, um, you know, it's, it's really no different for me. And when, I'm a, when I attack the field, like I said, my mentality is the same, no matter if you're a new guy. It's like we were talking, I was talking to Jamal the day I heard um, Denard getting on him. You know, he just got here. Um, and, you know, we didn't spend time in OTAs together, but at the end of the day, like you said, we all expect all 11 to be on the same page when you hit the field. Jeff, what did you see from Devondre today, and where do you think he is? Um, you know, he, he got some good work in today, um, individual and, you know, um, the team reps he got. You know, of course, um, when, I, when we're doing the team reps, I was trying to focus on my job. Uh, we'll see on the film. Um, but like I said, he's a big dude. He can move. Um, I think the biggest thing for not just him, but for me too, um, we saw that today. You know, we all have to just get in shape. I think that's the biggest thing with uh, playing the game of football and especially playing in trenches. Uh, we always, every play, we got 600 pounds on us. Um, you know, just never know. Um, you may get a single block every now and then, but you got 600 pounds on it. So I think um, not just him, um, you know, like I said, we talked about it in our individual period. We all just have to get in shape. But I think he on the right track. And, um, you know, my job is to keep leading and help him the best way I can. You said it feels kind of the same, even though Danico's not here anymore. What is kind of filling that void from a production standpoint? How, how do you go about filling somebody that provided as much as he did over the years? It started, it started yesterday. I mean, our job is to not focus on guys who we lost, but the guys who we, uh, we got this year. And one thing about this league is prove and reprove. Every year, you can prove who you are, but at the end of the day, you got to reprove it. And that's the mentality that I'm taking um, I'm into this season. And the guys who we got this year, even with the new addition, I always say, you know, them guys got to prove that they can rush the passer and affect the game like we had in the past with Danico. But at the end of the day, we don't have Danico no more. We got new faces. And I mean, quite frankly, we got some a lot of guys from last year that rush inside, even guys like Arden who had inside rushes. But, you know, I, I got full confidence in the guys we have right now. Um, I'm not speaking on them no more to pass. Like I said, I'm focused on the guys we have in the building. And the biggest thing is, like I said, my job is to continue to help the guys around me improve and I, um, improve every day I come on the field. So. The, knee ankle, the knee and the ankle have been bad luck the last two years. Do you look at it like you're due for good luck uh, to, to stay healthy? or what, What's the mindset regarding staying healthy, getting the full season to be able to produce the way everybody knows you can? I want to say it's bad luck, man. I, it's football. I, it's not a person that played this game can say they haven't been banged up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm big in my faith in God, and I know I was listening to a song this morning about Ja'Kalen Carr, and it's um, – you will win, and I think this is my winning season. Um, no matter what, when I attack the field, you know, I attack it with a purpose. I don't think that I'm going here with, I'm going with a mindset of injuries. I go in with a mindset of every day I, I'm, I'm able to get on the field. I'm able to be out there with my teammates. I'm going to go 100 miles per hour. I'm going to give it all, my, all I have. So I think at the end of the day, I don't come in as bad luck. I don't believe in bad luck. Um, I, I think everything happened for a reason. Um, I've been believing in that since as a kid. Um, everything I've been through in life, it happened for a reason. It have taught me. It made me who I am today. So I'm excited for this upcoming season. I'm healthy. You know, hopefully I can get through this season with no injuries. But who knows? It's a game of football. So like I said, I'm excited about this year. What do you 
change that they've made in terms of the overall defense getting more physical on the outside with the corners more aggressive? How much does that kind of change your role down in the trenches? It don't change at all. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I'm excited about it, I would say. Um, you know, I, I could, since OTAs when I was here, um, you know, I, I could, and being in the main room, I know what Denard is expecting out his corners. And when they didn't do it, you know, we heard about it in the meeting room. So I'm excited about it. Um, I think nothing changed for me is other than, especially on passing down, get to the quarterback. You know, I think we have to do a better job this year affecting the quarterback. And with all his corners pressing and being able to compete early, you know, in the, in the down, um, when the play snap, I think that's going to be big for us instead of, um, you know, like I said, maybe whatever it may be in the past. But like I said, this year, I know what, we coaching and um, and what we getting from Denard in the mean room. Um, I'm excited about that. As you saw today, um, you know, we all got to be on the same page. If the pass rushing out there, it's no matter if they coming up pressing and competing, it don't really matter. Um, quarterback still gonna have a lane if we not on the same page up front, or you know he gonna duck the ball off to somebody. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we all just got to be on the same page. Like I tweeted when we signed Schneid, you know, help me help you. They helping us on the back end. You know, the guys up front gonna eat. We eat up front. They they um, have opportunity to get interception and stuff like that. So, when you think of Twitter, you a couple weeks ago had some criticism for us. Not speaking on that. I'm moving on. When, when you look at the, the top ten list of interior D line, Aaron Donald moved on, and here you are. You know, at fourth place, is it kind of like where like at Jordan Mead possibly like I took that personally? Like, how do you approach that? And then what can you do to take what you feel will be the rightful place on that? Like I said, man, just then I said, I feel like this is my winning season. Um, you know, I'm not in competition with none of them guys. I respect every guy on that list. Um, guy that I have tremendous respect for is at number one. Um, he deserved to be at number one. He got three Super Bowls. He have led the interiors in sacks every year. And I think that's what I'm chasing. You know, I'm not chasing to be on a, somebody ranking list. I'm chasing to be the, the best D tackle in this league. And that's helping my team win. That's getting to the quarterback, tackle for loss, whatever it may be. Now, I think at the end of the day, it's how I prepare. I've been preparing myself leading up to this point, and it's how I'm preparing myself in camp. You know, that, that list is, is, is good to see, but at the end of the day, like I said, them lists don't define you as a football player because, I mean, quite frankly, I don't know who made them lists, but, um, you know, you still have to prove it. And that's why I said this league is all about proving and reproving. Do you do anything different this year to get yourself better, whether it's conditioning, you know, weight, strength? What, what's, what was your offseason focus? It's been all that. It's been all that, honestly. And I think my weight, the biggest thing, when you're talking about, like, longevity and you're talking about endurance, um, my goal this year is never been going to a game over 310. Um, I came to count right on time. I mean, right at that mark. So I think my goal is just how can I prepare myself each week by being the best shape of my life, by being, um, I guess, being able to play fast. And that with the playbook, guys around me, make sure they're ready to go. And I, th I think at the end of the day, man, when you're just thinking about these over – I mean, when you go back and just watch tape, you're like, what can I have done better on this play? And I think a lot of it um, – a lot of teams, as you saw last year, that when I went back and watched films, a lot of play action or whatever it may be, it's like, how can I be better – against a double team because I know I'm getting a slot. I'm getting a double team. So it's like, how can I go um, after practice or whatever it may be after a game to talk to Rock and talk to Denard, what you think I should have done better, which I did with Coach T, but it's like, how can I keep improving that? So like I said, I'm excited about this year. I'm excited to uh, keep growing as a player, as a leader. Um, this is going to be a great year for us. What's the you haven't played at? It's about 320, maybe. Uh, I, feel, I felt it yesterday, my first day back here yesterday, being down. I said it's going to be, uh, my goal is to never be over 310 this year. How do up downs now compared to high school? <laughs> I, look, I, I got to say, I told him I got on about rep 15. My quad started to get heavy. He really told us we had 40, so everybody thought 40. But he got he gave us a little cookie today and only made us do 20. So Are that was exciting. Or are they just part of the workout? I think it was just part of the mentality that he wanted to bring to our defense. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it.